Hey there, Truster fans. In a crazy week for the cryptoverse, Tether's USDT briefly deviated from its peg due to an imbalance in Curve's three pull, uh, causing a stir in the community. And newly released financial documents reveal that Tether was backing its token in part with Chinese commercial paper as of 2021, indicating a level of exposure to the Chinese market that Tether's users may not have fully understood. Uh, it's fine with you and me. We're not pathological warmongers, as is the United States government, but what are you going to do? <laughs> they hold all the cards and they hate China and so must you. Uh, in other news, uh, BlackRock, yeah, we're going to talk about that a little bit. And uh, I have a video cooking on uh, TikTok. So BlackRock, yeah, the world's largest asset manager has filed an application for a Bitcoin spot exchange traded fund. Huge news. Amid ongoing scrutiny of Binance's trading practices, Binance CEO Cheng Peng Zhao uh, has refuted accusations that the exchange has been secretly selling Bitcoin to stabilize the price of its BNB token artificially. Uh, in regulatory news, the Texas State Securities Board has issued an emergency season desist order against crypto lender Abra, alleging securities fraud, insolvency, and much, much, much more. So let's dig right in. <laughs> Uh, the most impactful event of the last week in crypto would probably be the brief depegging of USDT. Uh, Tether's USDT stablecoin deviated slightly from its peg to the US dollar, apparently due to an imbalance in Curve's uh, three pool, stablecoin pool holding a massive amount of liquidity in three top stablecoins, USDT, USDC, and DAI, uh, causing a stir in the crypto community. Uh, the imbalance occurred uh, when a whale address borrowed 31.5 million USDT and swapped it out for USDC leading to a slight deviation in USDT's value. The USDT weightage in Curve's three pool, which usually stands at 33.1%, rose to over 70%. Despite the deviation, Tether's chief technology officer, Paolo Ardonio, assured the community that there was no cause for concern and Tether was ready to redeem any amount. Uh, this incident comes just months after a similar depagging scare with USDC. And since we're talking about Tether, uh, in a significant revelation, newly released financial documents show that the company was backing its token in part with Chinese commercial paper as of 2021. This information came to light through a freedom of information law request made by uh, Coindesk and Bloomberg. Uh, the use of Chinese commercial paper, a short-term debt instrument issued by Chinese corporations, indicates a level of exposure to the Chinese market that may not have been fully understood by Tether's users. I have no idea why is it a bad thing, but this could have implications for the perceived stability and value of the USDT token. Uh, the same set of documents also shed light on Tether's banking partners and a substantial $5.1 billion loan program. Uh, the details of these partnerships and the loan program could provide further insight into Tether's operations and financial health. Uh, the loan program in particular is noteworthy due to its size. It suggests that uh, Tether has been lending out a significant portion of its reserves, potentially impacting its ability to maintain the pad of USDT to the US dollar. Uh, this information could be crucial for investors and users of USDT in assessing the risks associated with the token. And here's the news that has us all aflutter. Uh, BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, has filed an application for a Bitcoin spot exchange traded fund. If approved, it would be the first of its kind in the United States. Uh, the application filed with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission reveals that Coinbase Custody Trust Company would be the custodian of the fund's Bitcoin holdings, while the Bank of New York Mellon would custody its fiat. Uh, the iShares Bitcoin Trust would trade as commodity-based trust shares. Uh, the Bitcoin price would be updated at least every 15 seconds during regular market trading using the CF Benchmarks Index. So far, the SEC stands firmly against spot Bitcoin ETFs, despite numerous applications, but the move by BlackRock, again, the largest asset manager in the world with the AUM nearing $9 trillion, trillion with a T, uh, could pave the way for other firms to follow suit, making a significant milestone in uh, integrating cryptocurrency into traditional finance. Uh, stay tuned to our TikTok. I have an explainer video in the works in which I dig deep into this, in my view, highly controversial matter. Binance CEO Cheng Peng Zhao uh, has refuted accusations that the exchange has been secretly selling Bitcoin to stabilize the price of its BNB token artificially. Uh, the allegations made by several market commentators suggest that uh, Binance was manipulating the market to inflate the value of BNB. I remember myself making that very accusation on several occasions. I guess I was wrong. <laughs> In response, CZ stated that Binance had not sold any of its BTC or BNB. He also pointed out the difficulty of determining who sold based on the price chart involving 
involving millions of trades. Uh, this comes amid ongoing scrutiny of Binance's trading practices, including allegations of wash trading. And more somewhat Binance-related news, the Texas State Securities Board has issued an emergency cease and desist order against crypto lender Abra and its founder, William Barhide, um, alleging securities fraud and insolvency. The regulator uh, claims that Abra has been insolvent since at least March 31st, 2023, and accuses the company of misleading the public through Abra earned and Abra boost investment offerings. Uh, the filing also alleges that Abra Trade and Plutus Lending have secretly transferred assets to Binance, with assets valued at over $118 million on Binance.com as of February 2023. Uh, despite the regulatory findings, Abra continues to claim on social media that it's not bankrupt and operates normally. The regulator has revealed that Abra has substantial funds with various companies, uh, some of which are undergoing liquidation or bankruptcy processes. Uh, Abra is still permitted to allow customers to withdraw funds while awaiting a scheduled hearing on the matter, but I feel Cadabra is looming somewhere near here. In a significant development, a U.S. federal judge has denied the Securities and Exchange Commission request for a temporary restraining order to freeze the assets of Binance.us. Uh, the SEC had sought the order as part of its ongoing lawsuit against the cryptocurrency exchange Binance. However, Judge Amy, Br uh, Amy Berman Jackson of the D.C. District Court has taken a different approach. Instead of granting the SEC's request, she asked the SEC and Binance to negotiate terms for the exchange's operations and report back to the court within two days. Uh, so I guess they've already reported that, so I'm going to look into that for you guys. Um, judge Jackson has referred both parties to a magistrate judge to work on reaching a compromise, indicating that she's open to a negotiated solution rather than a court-imposed one. In the meantime, Binance has announced its immediate exit from the Dutch market after failing to secure regulatory approval. The exchange will no longer accept new users from the Netherlands, and from July 17th, existing Dutch users will only be able to withdraw assets with no further purchase trades or deposits allowed. Binance had been engaged in an extensive registration process as a virtual asset service provider with the Dutch regulator, but was unsuccessful. Despite the setback, Binance maintains that it, comply, uh, that it complies with the EU standards for anti-money laundering and uh, counterterrorism financing in other EU countries where it holds registrations. UK banking giant NetWest has rolled out a new policy requiring customers to give a heads up for cash withdrawals over 2,000 pounds. Wow. Uh, the new policy also applies to withdrawals from cryptocurrency platforms. Now, if you're looking to withdraw more than 2,000 pounds, you'll need to give the bank a 24-hour notice. And that's not all. You may also be asked to explain the nature of your transaction and provide documentation. But here's the kicker. Uh, even after jumping through all these hoops, the bank can still deny your transaction if they're unsatisfied with your explanation. This policy has sparked a fiery debate. I don't know what's to debate here. This is bullshit. Critics argue that NetWest is using the specter of cryptocurrency scams as a smokescreen for its own shortcomings. The bank had previously imposed daily limits on transactions, citing customer protection from potential crypto scams. But with this new policy, it seems the bank is doubling down on its restrictive stance. Uh, despite all that, the news from the uh, hotbed of global basketball activity, the British Isles, uh, appears to be promising. <laughs> The London Lions, a leading British professional basketball club, has recently partnered with uh, BitPay, a cryptocurrency platform to facilitate payments in various cryptocurrencies. This move enables fans to use digital currencies like Shiba Inu, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and others supported by BitPay to purchase club merchandise, including jerseys and accessories. The development is part of a broader trend of expanding cryptocurrency payment worldwide. Uh, for instance, Binance Pay recently announced a partnership with Lizy to advance crypto payments in Europe, enabling the use of Shiba Inu, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other cryptocurrencies at 440 merchants in France and another 330 merchants across Europe. All right, so let's talk about some gaming news, uh, one of my favorite topics. Uh, Apple, a tech giant notorious for its lackluster gaming offerings, might be on the verge of a gaming revolution. Amid swirling rumors of a VR AR headset slated for a grand launch in 2024, Apple is also reportedly working on software that will make playing Windows games on Mac a smoother experience. Uh, this could be a game changer for Mac users who have long struggled with compatibility issues and quirky keyboard mapping. Uh, however, the Apple native VR headset comes with a hefty price tag of $3,500 plus tax. Actually, that aside, my biggest rub here is a battery that you're supposed to carry with you in the pocket or purse or something that's crazy. And uh, if you unplug the thing, the autonomous life is less than two hours. So anyway, this has raised questions about the value proposition, especially considering the current state of the metaverse, which is still largely underdeveloped and lagging to say the very least. 
Avalabs, a blockchain technology company, has launched Arcade 3, a program aimed at helping Web2 gaming giants transition to blockchain. The program will assist with game monetization, marketing, user acquisition, and risk management. Among the first participants are Tokyo-based firms Gumi and Gri, as well as Sharple, DeFi Kingdoms, and Guns Chained by Godzilla. Despite Steam's ban on crypto games, a number of crypto-themed games have emerged on the platform. These include Coin Invaders, a game that tasks players with saving big Bitcoin by destroying altcoins, and Crypto is Dead, a game set in a world where an attack has crippled the world economy and physical currency has returned. There are also several mining tycoon simulators uh, which require players to build mining rigs and businesses to cash in on cryptocurrency. Interestingly, uh, Ride Bread Games created a game based on Logan Paul's Crypto Zoo project, uh, offering players a chance to breed animals in uh, scientifically impossible pairings. Uh, Duke Wan, co-founder of Terraform Labs, is set to be held in extradition custody in Montenegro for up to six months. Uh, the court will decide on his potential extradition to South Korea, where he is implicated in a significant crypto fraud case. The U.S. has also requested his extradition on charges including securities fraud and market manipulation. Kwan and former CFO Han Chong Jun were arrested in March while attempting to flee to Dubai with the counterfeit travel documents. This followed the collapse of the Terra ecosystem in May 2022, which resulted in losses of up to $40 billion, equivalent to $40 billion, shall we say. Kwan is also under investigation for uh, alleged connections to local politician Miloiko Spajic. Uh, Kwan and Chong Jun are due to face trial in Montenegro on June 16th, uh, so it's actually happened already for document falsification. And finally, a digital art collection previously owned by the now defunct crypto hedge fund Three Arrows Capital has been auctioned off by Sotheby's. Uh, the collection, assembled by 3AC in 2021, included some of the most sought-after non-fungible tokens in the crypto world. The auction's star was the goose, a digital artwork by Dmitry Chernak uh, depicting a golden goose laying eggs. <laughs> Originally purchased by 3AC for 1,800 ETH, approximately $5.8 million, Jesus. Sotheby's sold it for about 5.4 million plus fees totaling over $6.2 million. Other NFTs in the collection included three crypto punks and one uh, autoglyph from Larva Labs, fetching between $75,000 and $120,000 each. Three sales highlight the continued interest and value in the NFT market. I seriously doubt it. I have my own theories on that. I'm going to put them on the internet for you guys and uh, hopefully we'll have a laugh together. Anyway, this is it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe to our TikTok. Like I said, I have a video cooking up there right now. It's an explainer of the uh, of the BlackRock deal. Uh, it's kind of a doozy, so if I were you, I'd really I'd follow this uh, pretty closely because it is a milestone in the crypto space. See you later. Cheers.